Hello and welcome to chapter five. So today we are going over inter-VLAN routing. And uh, it's gonna be, in, it's all hands-on lab today. So what I want you to submit for um, homework is the packet traces that we build together. All right, so let's get started. Now, inter-VLAN routing means if you created VLANs on your switches as we've done in week three, uh, in chapter three, you need either a router or a layer three switch to enable these VLANs to communicate with each other. So that's what we're gonna be doing. We're gonna use a router to enter VLAN routing, to do the inter VLAN routing, and then we'll use a layer three switch and we'll see how it works, okay? It'll be a pretty quick, I think it's a pretty quick chapter, but it's very important and you need to understand the commands that we get through this. All right, what is inter VLAN routing? Again, it's the, if you have two VLANs right here created, VLAN 10 and VLAN 30, and the only way to be able to commute, to send data between each other is to go through a router. Now, what you could do in the old days is you can dedicate this, this, um, this link to VLAN 10 and this link to VLAN 20, uh, VLAN 30, and so on. Now, if you have a lot of VLANs, you have to have a lot of interfaces on the router because each interface will be dedicated to a VLAN default gateway. And that's usually what we do not really do that. That's the legacy old way of doing it, but it's costly. So now what we're going to do, we're going to do something called an in, you know, router on a stick into VLAN, where you can have a whole lot or, more, well, let me show you the configuration. Instead of having, the, well, let me go back. I just want to make sure I understand, even though we're going to do it. Either we're going to use a, a router, and it's going to be connected directly to a trunk, or we'll use a multi-layer switch. We'll we also have a trunk directly to that multi-layer switch as well. Okay, so to prep, we really don't need to do any of these preparations. You know what? Let's go on and do it because this is, it's best to see it when we are doing it at ourselves. All right, so here's what we're gonna do. Uh, we're gonna go to Packet Tracer, open up Packet Tracer, and uh, let's grab 2960 switch right here, okay. And uh, let's grab in two PCs, PC1 and P PC0 and PC1, okay. PC0 is gonna be connected to port, oops, sorry about that. PC0 is gonna be connected to port 01 on the switch, PC1, will be connected to zero two on the switch. Okay, let's make this is, let's create the VLANs inside the switch. This is what you should do first. So EN config T, let's give it a host name, host name SW1, no IP domain lookup, okay. And let's create the two VLANs, VLAN 10. Let's name it name um, students. And let's uh, do a VLAN 20 and name that faculty, right? Now let's go to interface FA0 slash one. That's where this guy was at, right? And say switch port mode access and take that port by saying switch port access, take that port and send it to VLAN 10. Let's go to interface of fast ethernet zero slash two, which is this interface right here and say switch port mode access and then switch port access to vlan 20. All right so now there are two vlans now this that now that we set the vlans and we assign the ports to the vlans now you should assign the ip addresses to the pcs let's give this pc an ip address 
that belongs to 192.168.10. Let's give it two slash 24 and his default gateway 192.168.10.1. Okay, just dot one. That would be his default gateway, right? But he doesn't even have a default gateway. Now let's go to PC1 and give him an IP address 192.168.11.2, separate network, and the default gateway 11.1. Now, obviously, these two guys will not be able to ping each other. And the only way they're going to be able to ping each other here, I'll give you a, a show you, because they are in different lands, right? So if you type ping, 192.168.11.2, it's going to fail, and we expect it to fail, right? But if you, um, <clears throat> now what we're going to do is we're going to set up a router. <clears throat> Excuse me. So now let's go get a router. Let's go get a 2811 router this time, right? And what we're going to do, we're going to create a trunk right here and send it to the router interface fast ethernet zero zero. So I go get a trunk and from the router to the switch, we need a straight through cable. I'll go to fast ethernet zero three because that's not used. And I go to the router fast ethernet double O, right? Now I got to make sure that this interface is a trunk. So I'll go to interface, I'll go to the switch interface fast Ethernet zero slash three. And then I say to that um, switch port mode trunk. No shot, why is it uh, down? All right, for some reason it's down. Okay, now, once it's a trunk interface, let me just double check, type show run, control Z, then show run, and zero 03 is active, so we're all good. Now all I have to do is activate the interface. That's why it's down, because the fast Ethernet zero interface is not down. Now, when you go to the router, and here's what you're gonna do. Now you gotta remember these commands. To enable these routing talk to each other. Say no, of course, and do enable config T. All right, let's give the router a host name R1. All right, no IP domain lookup. All right now, you go to the what we're going to do is we're going to take this interface, fast Ethernet zero. And we're going to subdivide it into sub interfaces, virtual interfaces. Okay, so you're going to go, first of all, you're going to go to the fast Ethernet zero slash zero interface, which is interface where the trunk is at. And if there is an IP address, remove it. So you type no IP add, and then you type no shut, enter. Okay, now once you've done that, now you can create sub interfaces. So you're going to say int fa0 slash 0 0.10. If you write the 0 0.10, that immediately creates a sub interface, just like a default gateway. Now then you got to use the command encapsulation, type enc, hit the tab key, and say dot1q10. Now what you're saying right here is, that the tagging for this uh, for this sub interface is going to be number ten. So any any frame that leaves this sub interface zero dot ten will be tagged with number ten. Okay, that's what you have to do that before you even assign the IP address. By the way, this number right here zero dot ten you can you can call it any number you want. But it's preferable that you use the same number that it's going to be dedicated for. It's going to be dedicated for the default gateway of VLAN 10. So you should write number 10 here. 
Here you have to write number 10 because that's the tag that is going to be placed on the frame when the frame is placed on the trunk. Now, once you're done with that, then you assign the IP address, the default gateway for VLAN 10, which is 192.168.10.1 with the subnot mask. You don't have to type no shut, but if you want to type it, it doesn't hurt. So you just created a sub interface right here, which is a default gateway for VLAN number 10. Now I'll type in, I'll create another sub interface, FA0 slash 0 0.20. Okay, I just want to create another default gateway for VLAN 20. I'll do encapsulation, DOT1Q20. And then I write IP add. 192.168.11.1 with 255.255.255.0, right? If you want to type no shot, no shot, that's it. Now, what happens is when I send a, a frame, it goes to my default gateway, the sub interface 0 0.10. That sub interface grabs that frame, pulls the packet out, looks at the IP address and turns uh, and then sends it to the other sub interface 0 0.20. It gets encapsulated with 20 tag and it goes back in here and he'll be able to reach them back and forth. So they should be able to ping each other. So if I go to PC0 and I hit the up arrow key to repeat the command, they should be able to communicate with each other. Now, there you go. That's it. This is called, this is really chapter five, to be honest with you. That's it. See how quickly it is? This is called router on a stick because you can create as many VLAN as you want and you will have one trunk going to the router. Right? Uh, don't forget, these ports that are attached to the PC has to be in their own VLANs. This is going to be a trunk port. It is not dedicated to any VLAN. Is that clear? This is have to be sub interfaces. So if you don't remember what we did, just rewind back a little bit and go step by step. Okay, simple as that. Now, the router by default has enabled routing in it, so you don't have to do anything. But as we've discussed earlier or previously, that the router might be a little bit too expensive for you to do. Uh, to use to for inter VLAN routing. You see, inter inter VLAN meaning within the switch, you want to be able to do routing itself. So what we're going to do is we are going to remove the router, or actually not remove the router, remove the link first. Let me just remove the link because I want to leave the router, put it on the side, and I'm going to bring in, go to switches and bring in this switch right here. The uh, the layer three switch because it's cheaper to use. All right. This is already connected as a trunk. You do exactly the same thing on the layer two switch. All right. So go ahead and bring in. You can use a crossover or a straight through. I'm going to use a crossover because they're switch to switch. And I go from fast Ethernet 03 to fast Ethernet 01. Okay. Now, here's what you do on the switch three to enable it to do inter VLAN routing. This is layer three switch. So click on it, go to CLI, and you type EN, config T. Let's, uh, let's give it a host name, host name SW, let's call it two. And no IP domain lookup. Now, this switch, because it's layer three switch, it can do layer two and layer three. So you have to tell that switch, hey, I want routing. I want route inter VLAN routing. So you have to t type the command IP routing. That's important. Because if you don't do that, um, they won't be able to route between each other. And then you got to create the two interface, the two VLANs. First of all, let's create the VLANs just like we created them on switch two. On the, on the bottom switch. So say VLAN 10, you don't have to give it a name, but let's do it. Name students. And let's do VLAN 20, name faculty. 
And then you create, give the IP address into Vance VLAN 10. That's going to be the IP address, which is the default gateway. So you say IP add the default gateway for VLAN 10, which is 192.168.10.1 with subnet mask 255, 255.255.0, right? And then uh, you can type no shut, although you don't have to because you see it already went up. And let's go to interface VLAN 20 and give it the IP address, IP add 192.168.11. Dot one sixty eight dot eleven dot one two fifty five two fifty five two fifty five dot zero type no shut and that's it now you got inter VLAN routing no encapsulation stuff none of that this guy right here by the way is a trunk by default although you could do that we'll learn a little bit about more of that in class but for now that's all you have to do so if you hit the upper arrow key and now, PC0 should be able to ping PC1 going through the layer 3 switch. And uh, there you go. Let me just make sure. Hit the upper arrow key again, and it replies. By the way, it times out because there's a lot because of the ARP requests. Okay? So now... We don't have to use a router anymore. We can use a layer three switch. So how do you do it? Bring in a layer three switch, make sure you enable IP routing, and then give the default gateways, the default gateways are going to be the IP addresses on in, inter VLAN 10 and VLAN 20. That's it. And you got inter VLAN routing. Now we can even make it easier. Okay, so what I'm gonna do is, why even have this switch? when this guy can do both, correct? So here's what we're gonna do. I wanna remove this and then bring the switch on the side, right? And I'm gonna bring in, take these two PCs, PC zero. First of all, oops, sorry about that. Click on the inside here, then click on the X, so you don't delete everything. Get rid of these. Put this to VLAN 1, put this to VLAN 2. So take this, go to V, go to fast ethernet. Zero 01 was the trunk, let's make a zero 02. And zero, this is gonna be zero 03, right? Just put them on different ports. And then I can go to the switch and say, because you already have the IP address and it's already doing routing, right? The IP address on VLAN 10 and the IP address on VLAN 20, it's already in there. So uh, I can go to, go to interface fast ethernet zero slash two and say switch port mode access and switch port access to vlan 10. then i go to interface fast ethernet zero slash two and i say switch port switch port mode access and then switch port access to vlan 20. and that's it now you have them both on two different VLANs. Oh, did I? Oh, God, I did. Oh, my messed up. I did. Oh, God. All right, let's, let's start over again. Hit the upper arrow key. Zero two should be VLAN 10, right? And then I go to interface fast ethernet zero slash three. And then I say switch port mode access to vlan 20. switchboard mode access first and then the switchboard access to vlan 20. okay so uh sorry for the mess up but what you do is you just say 
go to interface fast ethernet zero two and say switchboard mode access then switchboard access vlan 10. then go to port zero three say switchboard mode access and then the switch port access vlan 20. that's it the inter vlan routing is already enabled by typing ip routing and we already gave the default gateways. Now, in other words, you typed interface VLAN 10 and gave it the IP address. You type in, you typed in the interface VLAN 20 and gave it the IP address. Now we should be able to ping each other, right? Now we're just going right through the switch from one device to the other and bingo, it works, all right? So which is the simplest way of doing it? It all depends. You know, if we have another switch with trunking, which we'll do in class with our, with our class activity, we'll do the router switch, we'll do the multiple switching, where we use to have, where we, where we are going to need um, a layer three switch to inter VLAN. Or if you just, if, if you just have one switch with a whole bunch of lean, VLANs, that's the easiest way to do it, right? If you have multiple switches, um, layer two switches, then you need a layer three switch, just like we did on the previous example, or a router. Okay? So remember, this is what you make sure you save this and you hand that in as your lab. Let's continue with our lecture to see if there's anything in there that we did not cover. We pretty much covered all of chapter five right now. So here is the uh, router on the stick example. Make sure that this interface is a trunk, right? It's not part of any VLANs. These two interfaces are going to be in their own VLANs. Remember, the IP address on this guy is going to be this. The, his default gateway is the 10.1 on that sub interface, right? So here's the sub interfaces that we created 0.10. Don't forget, you got to do encapsulation DOT1Q10, right? And give it the default gateway and so on. Make sure that the physical interface has no shutdown first. I usually type no IP add first, right? Show VLANs will give you everything that we just did. Show IP route on the router will give you the interfaces, right? Verify routing by pinging, all right? Now, switch port issues. Well, you, we, we've done that already. Switch port, access VLAN. You got to make sure that you give the, right? Each port goes its, to its specific VLAN. Switch port mode, trunk. The, inter, the interfaces that need to be trunk has to be trunked. For example, this interface right here should be untrunk. These two guys should be access, correct? Now, when you go right here, make sure you use the encapsulation DOT. Which one is the tag? Like I explained to you when I was doing it in Packet Tracer. Okay. Show interface, show run will give us the verification that we did it right. Now, errors with IP addressing. Uh, make sure that the IP address that you have on the PC and its default gateway corresponds to the default gateway of that sub interface, right? Layer three switching. What we did with the layer three is we did the switch virtual interface, the SVI, right? On both, where you type the INT VLAN 10, give it the IP address. Now, that is like the default gateway on a layer three switch. You don't have to do encapsulation. You don't have to do sub interfaces, none of that stuff, right? Now, all you have to do is go to each interfa interface VLAN 10, give it the IP address and the sub not mask, and you're done. The only other thing you have to do on that layer three switch is enable IP routing by typing at the at the config mode IP routing, and that's it. All right. The routed port is really you turning a, a port on a layer three switch to be a regular interface router port where you can give it an IP address and it can connect from one device to another device. That's what it, it's really for. Okay. So we discussed all of that stuff and the SVI advantages. We talked about that. The routed ports, routed ports is not associated with any VLANs. This is like for trunks. 
you really don't use it with VLANs at all. And no STP on them, even though um, <clears throat> they act like trunks. So you got to type no switchboard on them, then they, they become a regular router interface. They don't run into, they don't run STP, and you don't dedicate them to a VLAN. Well, you can use them as trunks between the distribution and the call layer switches. The SDM we don't have that. We actually use the CCP to do a lot of this stuff. But here are some issues that you may want to take a look at when you are troubleshooting. VLANs. Okay, make sure all the VLANs are done on all the switches, which we'll do in our um, <clears throat> class activity. And we'll, we'll assign all of that. You'll see what we're talking about. Make sure all the VLANs have the correct IP addresses if you need them to. So is the routing and so is the hosts, right? Make sure routing has to be enabled either on a layer three switch. And I ran into a few problems where when I put in just a, <clears throat> before I went over this, um, I did not enable routing. I did not type IP routing on the layer three switch. And I was, you know, I spent over an hour trying to figure out what the problem is. Then it clicked, of course. That's it. All right. So I think this is a pretty quick chapter. We should be able to go over it very quickly. Like I said, the homework is to submit that packet tracer and make sure that you leave everything in there this switch this switch and the layer three switch i want to see it just like that so i want to be able to go in here and see that you actually did the configuration on the router on the layer two switch even though this is our final um design that we did okay so um we will meet again in chapter three and uh until then God bless.